In this video, two Hyundai Stellas. So we're currently enjoying taking photos of both Hyundai Stellas. And the, when I drove this V8 one, um, some of you complained that I didn't do an under the bonnet shot and that's kind of fair enough really. So here it is, it really does have a Rover V8 from an SD1 in the um, engine bay and it fits quite nicely. Uh, it's very interesting, this car has double wishbone suspension which reveals its Cortina heritage. Uh, famously the Hyundai Stella was very Cortina-y but this one doesn't. So as well as not having um, a V8 engine which is quite a big difference this one has strut front suspension so um, despite looking very similar to this original Hyundai Stella um, it's actually technically very very different and we can see further differences if you do a look inside as well so here's the mark one where it's very old-fashioned dials very cluttered area around the gear lever more cluttered because matt's added a few extra switches in this case but um, the other stella is just magnificently beige but um, has a completely different dial set which is much more modern and it has the window switches here on the door instead but um, yeah mostly loving 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 the beige so beige. Right, first of all we're going to go for a drive in the um, gold medal which even came with this gold medal um, from Hyundai um, just to prove what a winning car it is. It's linked to um, the Seoul um, Olympics, which were in 1988 uh, in South Korea, where this car was made. So clutch down. And the engine, Mitsubishi in origin, fires into life. It's got a very noisy, um, put the window up, very noisy um, exhaust manifold, I'm afraid. So um, you're gonna have to listen to that chuntering away. But it has managed to drive here down in Devon all the way from um, Glasgow. So it's not doing too badly. And um, yeah, a very competent car really. Um, despite the um, rather leaky exhaust, um, the ride isn't too bad, it perhaps isn't the most refined, but it's got a, a beam rear axle still. But the main difference between this and the, um, let's let this Land Rover go, uh, the um, earlier Stella is that um, this one has strut front suspension, so entirely different front end. Now, you know, in theory, a double wishbone suspension is far superior to a McPherson strut, but in reality, for a regular production car, there's not enough of a difference that you'll notice. But the controls are very light, so, you know, it's, it's not power steering, but it doesn't feel like it needs it. And um, it's about 75 brake horsepower, I think the engine, which is well on par with, say, a Ford Sierra of the era. Um, slightly down on some, Peugeot 405 was up to about 90 brake horsepower from a 1.6. So um, in those sort of terms, not quite so good. But um, yeah, fairly refined when you haven't got a blowing exhaust. That is unfortunate. But I'm hoping to make the most of the option because you won't often see two Hyundai Stellas together. But this is the younger car. It's done 87,000 miles and noisy exhaust aside, it still feels very well put together. It feels pretty fresh. This steering wheel feels hardly touched, um, which is quite incredible. And um, this is an SGL, so I've got, um, I think is it central locking? Yes, central locking. I've got four electric windows. So um, a pretty good package. And in cost terms, this would have been way ahead of anything else. The styling is by um, Giugetto Giugiaro, one of my favourite stylists uh, for his Ital design company. Did a lot of work with Hyundai, did the first pony, and I think subsequent ponies were also Giugiaro, um, some or all of them. And did the Stella, 
which was later replaced by the remarkably bland Sonata. But um, yeah, it was cars like the Stella that really enabled Hyundai to get a foothold in the UK market. Following on from the Japanese, the Koreans came to have their go with mixed success. Uh, Daewoo obviously not being one of the successes, but Hyundai is now, along with Kia, you know, they're two of the best selling cars on the market. Um, people love them for their massive warranties. And to be honest, I think Kia and Hyundai are starting to lead the way in their markets, much the way the Japanese did um, once they got to grips with what Europeans wanted in a car. Um, but yeah, this, this is a, a really nice car. But um, I think it would be very remiss of me um, not to take the V8 out, don't you think? See how that compares. It has to be done. Sorry, sorry, very remiss of me. Um, I haven't done wipers. Oh, that's a nice. Oh, not quite parking in the right place, but there we go. That's a good wiper pattern. We've got no triangle of doom here. And um, yeah, interesting how the arms sit much closer to the bottom of the windscreen on the um, second generation version. Right, um, very, very different driving experience. V8. First of all, though, let's see how the, um, the wipers compare. Uh, push to wash, pull to wash, there we go. Oh, the wipers do stop at the bottom of the screen, but the arm is much straighter. And as a result, there's a triangle of doom going on over here. Ah, that's most dissatisfactory. So, there we go, wipers are now parked where they should be, that's good. I'm going to put some lights on and um, we'll see what a difference a V8 engine makes to um, a Hyundai Stella. Bloody hell, Matt! Gosh, um, the last time I drove this car, it wasn't particularly quick. But um, since that last time, Matt has fitted um, an Edelbrock four barrel um, carburetor. So two barrels as your primaries, but then some big fat secondaries come in to make life very exciting. Yeah, it's, um, it's the um, torque that makes these V8 engines so remarkable because he's had it dyno tested and it's 160 brake horse at the wheels which is pretty lively but in terms of torque um, it must be getting on for 300 pound foot of torque I would have thought but the noise oh feels very different uh, he's got a quick shift fitted to this um, LT77 I think it is no it must be a R380 with that gear pattern transmission from um, a Sherpa van I think and the conversion came about as a bit of a dare because this is Matt's first car he's trusted me with his absolute pride and joy so it was his first car and after he'd owned it a few years um, one of his friends challenged him to fit a V8 engine to it and he did and it took years and years but um, yeah it's a job well done suspension's been firmed up a bit but not a lot because he didn't want he didn't want anything that gave the game away, but look at this hill. Fourth gear we're in. And it's um, accelerating up it beautifully. So yeah, I, I mean, I've had to get Matt considerably drunk to let me do this video. He, oh, watch out, cat, because he does worry about this car. Like I say, he's owned it a long time. It's just clocked up 200,000 miles. And it must be said, it doesn't feel quite as tight as the other one did. There's a few sort of worn bush type clonks going on so it doesn't feel quite as good but i mean it still feels very pleasant to drive it, um the the ride is definitely a bit more firm than the base car but um yeah it's good it's all good It's still not rocket ship fast, but um, 
Oh, the noise and the experience. It just feels amazing. Uh, it's amazing how good the steering is. Um, it is rack and pinion, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong in that. Yeah, there we go, doing 60 miles an hour, 3,000 revs. Um, yeah, marvellous. Truly a car can be transformed by a Rover V8 engine, and an awful lot of cars have been over the years. So, um, yeah. So there you go. That's a video with two Hyundai Stellas in, one of which is rather epic. Um, so, yeah, well done, Matt, for building this car. And... Um, yeah, thank you for letting me drive it again. There is an earlier video on this in which I gave no indication of what was under the bonnet at all, failed to film it entirely. So for those who were annoyed first time, I hope this makes up for it. But yeah, this Edelbrock carburetor is, wow. Amazing. It does feel a bit wayward, it has to be said. Oh yeah, in terms of steering and braking. But, um, yeah, maybe those warm bushes are starting to tell their own tale. I'd better take it back now before Matt gets um, too upset. Oh, impressive turning circle. But unfortunately, that does mean we're going to have to accelerate again, I'm afraid. Madam, I may have ruined your phone conversation. <laughs> oh, Matt, you legend. Right, I'm going to calm down and take this car back to him, nice and gently, um, his pride and joy. But if you think a car can be improved by a Rover V8 engine, then the answer is... Yes, but fit an Edelbrock carburetor. Oh, I wish my Land Rover 90 V8 had had one of those. There we go, that was a video with two Hyundai Stellas in it, one of which is quite exciting and one of which is very beige. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Don't forget you can go to hubnut.org and buy all the goodies, t-shirts and hoodies and mugs and stickers, etc. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Oh, it's quite warm here. Ian, are you still working? Yeah, that's it. I'm done now. Good. Yeah. It's so tempting to jump in.